welcome everybody to the glorious episode of the Student Body Right USC podcast. I'm your host, Dwayne Douglas, podcasting off the beautiful shores of the Pacific Ocean. Beautiful day out here in Southern California. Um, USC, Tulane, Cotton Bowl. Uh, we have um, we have that stuff coming for you right now. And listen, um, there's a lot, a lot to go over with this game, but it's really not a lot to go over. At the end of the day, it's just this. If you're going to tell the world or kind of sh- want to show the world that you're back. This is no diss to, to Tulane. This is no, um, I'm not kind of trying to diss the green wave. They are a really good football team. They really are. No question about it. They are a really good football team. I'm not going to sit there and say they're not a good football team. They are. Um, but you can't lose this game. You know, I mean, Mike, Tam- Mike Tomlin has one of my favorite sayings that the standard is the standard. Um, and it's true. The standard is the standard. Like if you're looking for, um, you know, to be a top team, you're looking to get back in the, get back in the whole situation with, um, with, with some of these great teams like Georgia, get back into these same, you know, the same um, conversational pieces with um, Alabama and being a top program, you got to win this game. You're looking around the pack, the Pac-12, you know, as far as the Bulls go, Oregon, Oregon won their game, um, Washington won their game, uh, they beat Texas. Like teams are, these Pac-12 teams are showing the nation what we saw all year from the Pac-12 that they are a really good conference. Now, as soon as they get really good, and as soon as soon as people just discover the transfer portal and they want to come to the Pac-12, and you know. Um, you know, quarterback after quarterback after quarterback decides to come to the Pac-12, you know, USC and U- UCLA are leaving. But if you're USC, you got to find a way. You can't lose a game to Tulane. Now, it doesn't matter how it is. It doesn't matter how it looks. We don't really, you know, I'm not looking for style points here. Jordan Addison's not going to be there. They had they to reshuffle the offensive line because of some injuries. But like Mike Town, but like Mike Tomlin said, and it says it over and over again, the standard is the standard, right? The standard is the standard. And if you want to build up um, that standard at SC, you can't lose a game to Tulane with the funny logo, all that stuff like that. They are a good team. Like I'm not disparaging them as a good team. They'd be a middle of the pack, you know, Oregon State-ish type squad, right? If they were in the Pac-12. We know that. Good team. Solid ball club. I I, I have all the all the respect in the in the in the world for them as a good team. 11 and 11 and 2. Um really good squad. W- went to Manhattan, Kansas, right? Not easy place to play. Went to went to Manhattan and won that game. So we know where the, we know where like you know where they stand. They can they can beat um, some quality opponents. They can play with some quality opponents. They they're a really good. They're a really good squad. They're uh, well coached. All those things. But if the standard is the standard, right? If the standard is the standard here. And you're USC, and you are trying to become the Pete Carroll USC, trying to become you know one of the top schools in the nation, trying to become that that you know that dominant force again. You gotta start stacking some bowl wins, and I understand the Pac-12 um, championship game was a disaster. Everything that could go that could go wrong did go wrong. You had injuries. You had um, you know you had defense just missing eight hundred and fifty five million tackles. Like it was it was a, it was it was gross to watch. Give all the credit to Utah. You know you know USC really. I'm not saying they should have beat Utah the first time, but they could have beat Utah the first time. Had every opportunity to beat Utah the first time. If they beat Utah the first time, they're probably playing Georgia right now or playing Michigan right now. 
they weren't going to a one loss USC wasn't going to was going to be was gonna, was it going to be left out of the college football playoff. And every year is different. Next year might be really tough because of all the quarterbacks in the Pac-12. So we'll see. But if the standard is the standard and USC is fight on and all these other things and, you know, Lincoln Riley and Caleb Williams, a Heisman Trophy winner, are, you, are we going to, Heisman Trophy winner is going to lose to Tulane. We got to find a way to make sure that doesn't happen. And he may be hampered in this game. Like, you know, that he, I don't think he has that full allotment of his mobility there. Um, you know, I think he's going to play. He's listed as probable in this game. So we'll see about that. I know Michael Jackson, the third, has an undisclosed. I mean, at college football, they don't, some, some schools don't, don't show injuries or, or disclose injuries. So I can't sit there and say um, that's, a, that's a thing there. It's, it's some, some schools tell you who's hurt. Some schools don't, don't tell you who's hurt. The USC has been on that, on that um, path where you don't really know who's going to play, when they're going to play, all the things like that. So whether it's 41, 40, um, you know, it doesn't matter. Like I, it doesn't matter how this gets done. It just needs to get done because you're trying to build something that's a long lasting moment here for this program to become the best it can be and for this program to be able to take it to another level as far as instead of being on the outskirts, just on the outskirts of the college football playoff, for them to be a perennial college football playoff squad. The quarterback play is going to be great at USC. It's going to be fantastic. Not even a question about the, the quarterback play at USC. Caleb Williams is their quarterback. Heisman Trophy winner. Probably going to be, if he plays again, play, have, plays one more season like this, he's going to be the number one pick in the, in, the, in the draft. Behind him coming in is Malachi Nelson, who, you know, <laughs> that, that kind of that same mold, great arm strength, great touch, that can do so many things, and he also is a can make can keep plays alive with his feet, which is a kind of a staple of quarterback play under Lincoln Riley. So, if the standard is the standard, if USC is USC, and the Trojans, who you know a lot of things are not going to be going in their favor in this game. You know, those boys got to get up at 7 a.m. to get ready for this game. I mean, it's 7 a.m. Pacific time, they're body clocks, right? Like this is like an old school, like NFL situation, right? Where, you know, you go, to, you know, your West Coast team goes to the East Coast and it has to play uh, a, 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 a one o'clock East Coast game, which is 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock their time, but um, body clock, right? Like those guys got to be ready. They've had a lot of time off. The Trojans have had a lot of time off. So you can lick your wounds. You feel bad about that situation there. Um, you know, if they have, you know, Travis die, if they have this, if they have that, like, you know, if, if Caleb doesn't pull up his, doesn't, you know, pull his hammy in this game and just kind of just gutting that game out, playing on one leg, could the coulda, woulda, shoulda of the season against Utah, right? Utah's favorite against Penn State in the Rose Bowl. So all those, a lot, a lot of different factors in this game are going against USC. USC's run defense has not been good. Tulane has a great running back and a quarterback who takes care of the football. So that's going in their, in their favor as well. So there's a lot of things going in their favor, but if the standard is the standard, and I'm keeping, I'm keep saying it, like they have to set a high standard that they're not going to be a, a USC team that loses to Tulane. And this is not to rank on Tulane or just Tulane. But you got you, you to win this game. If you're USC, you got to win this game. You can't play games here. You can't mess around. You got to win this game. Um, and I'm not saying, it, you know, when, when it comes to bowl games, like you, like, in the regular season, you worry about like the whole like, oh my God, um, 
you know, the style points, how much you win by, like, did you win by enough? You know, did you score? Could you, you know, if, if you're, if you win by 20, is that enough to impress people opposed to winning by 50, right? And this, and when you get to the bowl season, it's just, it's just, it's just, you want to win. And you don't care how it looks. Absolutely don't care how it looks. You want to win the game. And, and keep that thing, keep that thing rolling. Keep the positive vibes of this season rolling. L you lose to Utah twice. That's the only blemishes on your schedule. I can live with that if they end the season 12 and two with a bowl win in the Cotton Bowl against Tulane. We'll be right back. All right, let's go. Let's let's, let's head to um, Dallas here to talk about um, the Cotton Bowl here, and let's talk about the opponent here, right? So Tulane, Tulane is um, the Tulane Green Wave, really a really well-rounded football team, no question about it. Um, quarterback Michael Michael Pratt, sixty-four percent on on the completions, has twenty-five intercepts, twenty-five. That'd be great if he had twenty-five interceptions, but no, twenty-five touchdown passes, uh, five interceptions, been sacked 20, 23 times. Um, um, so he's been, he's been pretty solid for solid for them all year. Look at their passing game. They don't have, they have 30, they have a, their top receiver. Shea Wyatt has 35 receptions, but you look at the whole breakdown of this team and they don't have anybody over 35 receptions this year. Right. And they have a bunch of guys between, excuse me, between 23 catches and 35. So um, Deuce Watts has 31. Uh, Jackson has um, has 32 catches. Um, uh, Lawrence Lawrence Keys has 30 catches. Um, you know, you know, Tyreek um, James, the tight end, has um, 25 catches. So like they spread the ball around. So there is no one. I think that those are the kind of opponents that you worry about a little bit too, because you're saying to yourself, okay, they spread the ball around. So basically, anybody they put a lot, a lot like a lot like USC, anybody they put on the field is a threat in the passing game. So you can't sit there and say, "Oh, we're going to key on this guy, we're going to key on that guy." They spread the ball around to everybody. So that's one thing you got to look for in this game. But I do think you know for USC, like they have to go out there and um, just put everything they have into stopping Tejan Spears. Like Spears cannot get wild in this game. Spears is averaging 6.5 yards a carry. He's played very well um, this year for them. Um, he has run the ball, um, you know, exceptionally. So you you got to be, and he's also a, a pass catcher out of the backfield as well. So basically wherever he is, you need to find out where the heck he is. Like as soon as he, if he goes to the bathroom, you got to find out, you know, what stall he's in. Um, the guy is, wherever number 22 is, you have to find him. You can't, you can, this can't be a game where like you let, you let their best player just destroy you. And it's, and this, for Tulane, this is going to be like their Super Bowl. It's going to be their, like their, like their, um, how can I put it? Their um, college football playoff situation for them. This is, that's what, it, that's what they are going to feel like this is. So US for USC, you got to be careful in this game. And like, you know, you, but as much as they spread the ball around, you know where the ball is going. Like, you know, and, and, and you know, the ball's going to this running back. You know, this is a game where I think, you know, can, can, if USC doesn't run the football well, you could still see a path to victory, right? If Spears doesn't run the football well, do you see a path to victory for the Green Wave? I don't think so. Like, you know, so, I mean, so as long as, if you can do what they did against Charbonneau, they can do what they did against um, the running backs for Notre Dame, I think they can, I think they can do that. I mean, is that's the question you have to ask yourself is if, if Tulane played Notre Dame, who wins? If Tulane plays, you know, all the teams on the, on, on the, on the, on the, on the Trojan schedule, who wins? And that's the biggest biggest questions you might have about that. I mean, they, like I said, they would be they would be a middle of the pack team in the pack in the pack twelve, 
And USC pretty much, I mean, they beat all the all the middle of the pack teams in the Pac-12. So there's no reason not to think that they, they can find a way to win this game. And Caleb, what Caleb Williams' is health is a big part of it. Um, you know, we're never going to know until he has to become the mobile cable, the mobile, the mobile Caleb Williams. If Caleb Williams is has to be that mobile guy, if he has to be that you know guy who makes a play with his legs, you know, that's where we're gonna see the how how that hamstring is. And then you might have to see Miller Moss. But on the on the Tulane side, defensively, they don't talk about Ben don't break. All the all the metrics show that they don't give up a lot of big plays. And they don't make a lot of big plays, <laughs> but they just force you to just dink and dunk and, um, and and get down the field. And that's the way that that's the way that defense kind of operates, if you will. So if you're looking at how to attack them, I mean, they don't they don't just take what the defense gives you and just keep moving the football. USC has been a team, but with, with the exception of the Pac-12 championship game, they take care of the football. At, at the highest level, the running backs don't usually fumble. Caleb Williams doesn't usually turn the ball over. Um, the wide receivers don't fumble. I think we had like I think George Addison fumbled one time and he got it back. And George uh, Jordan Addison won't be won't be playing in this game, so that's going to be huge. That's no question about it. that's going to be a huge that's going to be a huge factor as far as as far as that goes. Him not playing in this game is going to be a big factor. So um, that's you know how the, from the Tulane side from the USC side. The, the offense is going to have to do what the offense does. They've been doing all year. I think the biggest concern for USC in this ballgame is their defense. And, and, the, and the, there is a reason for concern because when they tackle, it's all good in the hood. When they don't tackle, it looks pretty bad. And you can say about any football team, but they were giving up some huge plays to Cam Rising and everybody at Utah. I mean, they were just – they're guys who were just – they're gonna be able to tell their grandkids about that championship game against against um against USC, you know, guys who are not gonna be guys are gonna be like you know just you know just they're gonna graduate and be able to have that tape and 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 show their kids, hey, look look what I did against SC in that in that in that championship game. Not that they don't have quality players on that team, they do, but I think that's a huge part of it as well. Is that you have to find a way to mitigate their big plays and just stop this run game. And I do wonder. I do. I do worry a little bit about the offensive line, and, and the continuity there because they have some injuries. But with that being said, I think I, I do think I do think USC. You know, the, Austin Jones is going to be a huge factor in this game. I think I'm looking for a little relief Brown too. I, we were sitting here waiting for this, and maybe it'll maybe it won't come this year. Maybe it'll come next year, but we're still waiting for that relief that really Brown like explosion, right? That game where he just, you know, he, he takes a screen pass 70 yards for a touchdown, making people miss all over the place, right? Or that, you know, or that inside run that he just breaks for a huge game and um and get things and get things going that way. So the pieces are there. Um, they do have some depth issues at wide receiver, but you know, Mario Williams will probably be the healthiest he's ever been Hayden, he's ever been all year. Um, I think that's I am looking for him to have a huge game. Maybe, maybe not. Um Maybe not in like in a ten, maybe not in catches, but in probably yards. Like maybe you know four catches for, you know, a buck fifty or something like that. I mean, th those are the kind of things that Mario, um, Mario, Mario Williams can can do. And I think obviously on this show we know you know how we feel about Taj Washington. I think Taj Washington could be a huge factor in this game. Um, his quickness, his ability to kind of slip through the cracks of that secondary, two lane secondary, and make a big play here and there. And I think also too, if USC is able to win, you know, able to get some big plays in it, you can see, you know, Tulane who hasn't given up big plays all year say, "Hey, what's going on?" Like that's a huge part of it. Like how do they handle a situation where they don't give up big plays all year, but you're playing against the Heisman Trophy winner, you're playing against USC, you're playing against, um, you know, Lincoln Riley who was explosive as hell, and and you're starting to you start you start leaking you start leaking leaking plays defensively. That's a it, another factor is you know you have a coach who is sitting at home for a long time with game film on Tulane. You know you gotta think that this offense, whether that they got some plays for Tulane, 
and probably vice versa. But like, you know, this guy is the one of the preeminent play callers in all of college football. So I expect his offense to really shine in the cotton ball. I really expect that. I really expect that. I really expect him to be able to do that in this game. Big part of that game for for um, for SC. So I know people are. Um, it was the first show we had in a long time. Thank you for hanging to. The, thank you for hanging until the end. I didn't want to get into the recruits and the transfer portal stuff until after the season's over. So let the Cotton Bowl go. I really. I, I'm. I have to go to the Rose Bowl. So I would really not want to go to the Rose Bowl. Bad enough, I got to see Utah play Penn State. So I got to go my, my second straight football game where I got to go see Utah play. But then I got to go. I don't want to see that game knowing USC lost. <laughs> so hopefully they win that game. And then, then I can go to the, 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 the then I, then I can go to the Rose Bowl and be able to um to watch that and and and, and have a have a good time. Just watch a good college of quality football program. Uh, a couple of friends of mine are, are really good, really big Penn State fans. So it uh, should be fun. And, and, I, and I personally have never been to the Rose Bowl. So um, that should always be um, a good time there as well. So prediction time. And I think um, USC, um, Lincoln Riley, um, Cam, um, Caleb Williams and the company um, find a way. I think Kyle Ford is an X factor in this game um, to make some plays. I also think Taj, Taj Washington, as always, is a, is a guy who I really feel like is going to um, gonna be able to make some plays here. And I think Mario Williams, like get, get him in space, get his ability to make plays as well. They have to get over that first quarter of being playing at 10 a.m. in the morning. They should be able to do it because it's a, it's a, they, they've had a long break in between the Pac-12 championship and now. And they need to show some readiness. So I think I would say 35-32, USC finds a way to win this game and kind of ushers themselves into the next season in the Lincoln Rally era. 2023 and if you watch social media and you watch um everything that's going on with um the with the uh, with the trojans and what they're what they're putting out there with snoop dog it's club 23 i guess um we're looking forward to next year so um next year looking for some looking looking for some key things here the transfer, transfer, transfer portal has been has been good for them um we'll talk about those players um next next episode um probably after and we'll do all that stuff after the um after the Cotton Bowl, we'll see if um, USC will do a reaction show to the Cotton Bowl. And then after that, we'll get into all the offseason stuff with the Trojans. So as always, on a student body right, USC podcast. Fight on, folks. <laughs>